Hey there, AfterBuzz fans. I'm here with Jordan Swears of Rooster Teeth. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Good. So RTX 2016, what have you been most excited about for people to see? Oh man, there's so much stuff. Uh, one of my favorite parts of RTX is um, all the videos we get to show everyone, you know, that everyone's been working on. There's cool stuff from Red vs. Blue, cool stuff from Ruby, which we showed yesterday. Uh, getting to see, getting to watch episodes of Camp Camp with everyone. Uh, is it's a, that's always my favorite part. Camp Camp especially. <laughs> getting the sneak peek of episode five was really cool yesterday. So you're a, one of the writers for the show. Do you also direct or uh, do you uh, write for the show and kind of uh, supervise the animation? Um, yeah, I'm the I'm the director for the show. Uh, me, Miles, Carrie, and Gray are the series writers. Uh, each one of us, I think we each got two episodes uh, for the season. Um, but yeah, working with them has been great and. Uh, Getting one thing that's interesting is uh, making cartoons out of something I didn't write is a first, um, which was uh, episode two, which is what Kerry wrote, and trying to do his crazy script justice <laughs> in like storyboarding and animation throughout was an interesting challenge. But uh, I've been having so much fun with it. So yeah, that is an interesting new experience because with uh, animated adventures mm -hmm. and with X-ray and Vav, all of those were your visions or your co-created yeah. uh, co visions. So yeah, working with uh, working with these guys and working and bringing somebody else's vision to life that that. There are probably some challenges to go in with that as well. Yeah, I've, there were a couple of times where feeling unsure of myself, I went to Carrie. Was like, "What are you? What are you thinking for this part here?" Like, um, and he was very helpful in giving me some advice. But uh, I feel like for the most part, I've gotten a little better at it because, you know, it's if anything, it's nothing but a good learning experience. Um, but yeah, it's always been, you know, especially one big learning thing is. Uh, and this has been recent as well with uh, more people working on animated adventures is trying to communicate, you know, because it's always, as it plays in my head, it's very, you know, I know what it says, but then <laughs> trying to tell someone uh, how to how to do that is also very challenging, but I think I'm getting better at it. Delegating is always tough, especially yeah. when you've done everything yourself. Exactly, exactly. Now, one of the things that was brought up at the Camp Camp panel yesterday is that the writer's room is a very dark <laughs> place. Can you give us a, a peek behind the curtain a little bit about what it's like in there? It's basically the four of us, me, Miles, Carrie, and Gray, uh, get together. We start kind of saying, all right, what what are some tropes we could work with or like camp stuff? Then it turns into kind of character stuff. Then it's like, what's the worst thing we could say? <laughs> and then it's like, all right, let's make an episode about that using all these other things we talked about. Where like sometimes we will come up with like, you know, the anti-moral or the worst thing, the worst <laughs> part of the episode first and uh, kind of start from there and kind of, uh, flesh out the rest of it and so yeah it's not uh, it's not a place for those with uh, weak constitutions I guess delicate sensibilities yeah. um, so Miles was talking about pulling from a lot of camping experience did you ever go to summer camp or uh, or did you go camping with your family at all um, we went camping a couple times nothing like roughing it in a tent or anything <laughs> really um, I went to like a week long camp in sixth grade. That's, again, it wasn't that rough, and, <laughs> rough of an experience. I just don't like going outside. So I, uh, I stick to the stories that are more, uh, you know, less uh, out outdoors intensive, uh, but Miles especially, like he really helped us like, you know, understand how a camp would work and stuff like that. And uh, we've got a lot of uh, episodes, especially late in the season, that are kind of based on some of his experiences in the Boy Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> now, who, which character do you think is the most difficult to write for? Ooh, that's a good question. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it can be Neil because it's like you got to balance his anxiety with his love for science and how much he hates the camp. Uh, Max is really easy because if you just put any, something that David says in front of him, you, you can, it's pretty. It leads in pretty well. Um, I, for a while, uh, trying to find out what we were supposed to do with Nerf. Uh, who hasn't been on screen much uh, so far in the season, but you can see the point where we figure out his character <laughs> later on. Uh, but I think I think now we're in a good spot where like we we have everyone down pretty well, which is great uh, great to do. And uh, so early on, especially like sometimes it could take you know a couple seasons for characters to get locked down. So I feel like we're in a good spot right now. Now what? I'm trying to ask without like being spoilery. I want to ask like what you're most excited for people to see. Episode wise, what do you think is going to be the most interesting audience reaction? Hmm. Episodes pretty much the back half of this season's pretty uh pretty interesting. Uh we have some 
controversial stuff <laughs> yet to come. <laughs> episode episode six might cause some problems for some people. <laughs> episode seven could as well. Uh, I don't want to give away too much other than that. Um, yeah, when we were writing something, we were like, yeah, these are the ones we got to be ready for. Um, and uh, what I think is funny is after every week, you know, I see comments that are like, boy, I didn't think they could, you know, come up with something more <laughs> offensive or something like more crazy for this show. Like I thought killing the squirrel was, you know, was the uh, pinnacle, but uh, they, we always managed to top it. So maybe every, the next episode's always the most controversial, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are always one-upping yourselves. Yes. Speaking of, were you expecting to get an extra two episodes this year? Not at all, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a welcome challenge in the middle of production to uh, to get two more episodes, and you know, it's a good problem to have. It means change uh, everything. <laughs> yeah, it, it really, it just means like everyone's liking the show, and especially uh, you know, the big man Matt Holm upstairs. Uh, I can sound like he's God or something. <laughs> <laughs> Our Lord and Savior Matt Holm took pity upon us. But yeah, uh, it's just like it's kind of unprecedented. You know, we never, no other show has gotten more episodes. You know, halfway through the season, so. Uh, it's a good problem to have, and uh, we're looking forward to get, really just getting to write more episodes is, is <laughs> really a fun part of it. Now, we were told specifically to ask you uh, by Jen Brown, uh, we would love to hear your Flower Scout impression. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, Sam Ireland, who does it, all the Flower Scouts. Oh. They were, all three of them were on our panel yesterday. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, I probably made her laugh doing this. Okay, I'm trying to think of a line. Okay, <clears throat> my favorite character is Tabby of the Flower Scouts, and she's it. I'm Tabby with two eyes. He can pee at me anytime. <laughs> yeah, it's just, and um, oh my God, is that Nikki? <laughs> we put in that head turn just because she holds that, she holds that uh, line for so long. It's just like, eh? It's so fun to do. <laughs> It is. So uh, I, we were talking about it a little bit earlier. X-Ray and Vav, you were gracious enough to come onto the after show and, and chat about it a little bit. Do you feel like X-Ray and Vav has been put into a good place in terms of like, that's a good place to end it? Or would you like to see more somewhere down the line? I think we're in a good place to, to pause and put on hold for now. Um, we don't know, you know, we don't really know what the future is, but you know, we put it in a good spot you know there's still some intrigue there's some new uh roads to go down um whatever the future x rain map is i will be very happy to uh participate <laughs> Yeah. And again, I, I was mentioning this the other day, but one of the things I'm really liking about Rooster Teeth animation is you have something like X-Ray and Vav, something like Camp Camp, something like Ruby. There are so many different types of shows, both in medium and style and comedic tastes. Where do you see Rooster Teeth animation going in the future? Well, we just got to make like, you know, one of every genre and then I think <laughs> we'll be good. And then we make two of every genre. Um, I think um, we got a lot of good talent in in the department right now and i think as we continue to expand you know not only the department but like the programming that we're putting out i think it'll be really cool to see who is up next to uh kind of come out and make a interesting show and we've got a lot of people who are capable of doing that so talking about there are a lot of different animation styles for red versus blue this season and uh you mentioned uh earlier that you got the chance to write for red versus blue this season and how it's difficult when you're bringing somebody else's vision into the animation world what was it like stepping into the writer's room for some <laughs> for someone else's project yeah that was really strange i feel like it's something i could do because you know i've watched everything <laughs> for red versus blue um but i did find myself struggling a little bit um, I found myself gravitating towards Griff. I don't know why. It's like <laughs> I could just, if I needed a joke, I'd make Griff say something. And uh, one of the best compliments was Miles read like the first draft of episode one and said, yeah, no, you, you write Griff like better than I do, I think. And it's like, I wish I could write Griff this well. So um, that made me feel good, you know, that early on. So then I, I got a little more comfortable. Um, yeah, a lot of it was making sure, like, you know, everyone was in character the whole time. It was it was an interesting challenge. Now, again, without giving too much away, what are you most excited for people to see upcoming from Rooster Teeth Animation by the end of this year, let's say? We have, 
we got something from every department, you know, the end of the rest of camp camp uh, is going to be amazing. Uh, the next episodes, the next three episodes of red versus blue are going to be amazing as well. <laughs> um, totally interesting new art style, uh, that we're tackling with that. Um, lots of other, uh, styles mixing live action and animation as well, uh, for red versus blue. Um, and then Ruby 4, uh, we showed a, a trailer uh, at the Ruby panel yesterday. Ruby is now looking amazing. It gets better every year. I, I keep saying it, and I'm so proud of those guys. Um, and uh, we have uh, another new 2D show coming out at the end of the year. Uh, Funhouse uh, kind of teased it at the end of their panel. It's going to be uh, the crappily animated... Uh, Adventures of the Band Sex Swing. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be an interesting show. So uh, stay tuned for more information on that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to to sit down and chat with us about the future of Rooster Teeth Animation. Where can people go if they want to keep up with you and your projects? Uh, you can go to roosterteeth.com. Uh, I have a profile there, and usually I use Twitter. Jordan Swears is my tag. So use that. Well, thank you again so so much. Thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you all next time.